What's up amigos, this is Cien de la Vega and I created this video for those who are in the sports motion graphics world and want to take their skill level and their goals to the next level. And that might be working for a network, working for an agency, working for a league or for a sports professional team or college team. One of the main things that a lot of people struggle with is creativity. And this is what I said eight years ago after my first season working for the NFL Network. And amigos, remember, you have amazing untapped creative potential inside of you, a fountain of creativity. Search for it, tap into it, and once you do, unleash it and create art that truly inspires. That was eight years ago, and to this day, I truly believe that within each one of us, there is that fountain of creativity. And my goal in this video is to help you find that key to unlock that creativity that is within. A little background on myself for those who don't know me. This is my 16, yeah, 16, one six, 16 years of working in the industry. I've been blessed to work on two ESPN 30 for 30 documentaries as the art director and motion graphics artist. I've worked for six seasons for Thursday Night Football for the NFL Network. And last year I worked on the graphics for the Thursday Night Football Amazon Prime show open. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how anyone can tap into their creativity using design principles. Number two is how to use After Effects. And I know there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of effects in After Effects, but there's a couple of effects and tools that I use that gets me 80% of the way there. And then finally, how to take your motion graphics to the next level, to that level that really makes it pop looks makes makes it look professional so that's what we're going to cover in this video it's a little long but every single minute is worth it because it's full of amazing golden nuggets <laughs> so stay tuned and remember life is a gift make it count amigos before we start the tutorial section of this video this will be a taste of my upcoming sports motion graphics course if you want to learn more, click on the link in the description or the button below. And FYI, it will be a live enrollment, so it'll be open for a short period of time. Definitely get on that early adopter list so you can stay up to date. One of the biggest hurdles is creativity. Either you don't believe you have the creativity or you just don't know really how to get started with your motion graphics. And I'm here to tell you that Yes, you can achieve that level of creativity. Find that creativity that lies within yourself, tap into it, unlock it, and produce amazing work. Now, Pablo Picasso once said, or at least is attributed that he said that good artists copy and great artists steal. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna rip off someone else's work. What I mean is getting inspired by other work. It's really studying the design principles that are behind that work, or even, videography or cinematography. There's a lot of principles in cinematography and photography that you can extract from those designs and implement it into your very own work. So as the first step to show you how you can start being creative and you do have creativity is we're going to go over a couple great examples. We're going to study some of these design elements, choose a couple that we want to incorporate in our own graphic and go from there. Now, Obviously, ESPN is one of the best. And this one, this is the one from Monday Night Football. They're, they rebranded Monday Night Football, their graphics package. And I really like this design. And there's a couple of design principles right off the bat. What I'll do is let me go to Photoshop. And let's go over a couple of design elements. Number one, there is balance, there is symmetry. Now, you can have symmetry that is perfect symmetry or asymmetrical, which means there's more on one side or the other side. So if I draw a line here, you can see that, if I draw a line here, it's not a perfect line, let me try to do a better line, there we go. You can see there's symmetry, Aaron Rodgers is right in the center. The Monday Night Football logo, really big, right in the center. And on the edges, you have the logo. So I like that. I like putting something along the edges. Another design principle is called hierarchy. And there is hierarchy, as you'll see that especially with text. And you can see that the, the last name, Rogers, is really big. And the first name is a lot smaller. Now. What they did is they did the invert. They did the outline for the text. So you have a couple different options. You can do something like what they did with Monday Night Football, or you can go with a thinner weight. So you have a couple options, but 
check it out. This hierarchy allows you to really focus on the last name. And again, there's more balance here. It's, this is very symmetrical. So this is a very symmetrical design. Just choose a couple things that really pops to you, that really catches your attention. And for me was the text. I like the logo in the background, really nice and big. And I like adding an element here on the edges. So we'll incorporate those design principles in our own graphic. Now let's go back. And another great resource to look is Too Fresh Creative. It's a sports post-production agency based out of LA. They do amazing work. A lot of 3D work, Cinema 4D work, but I'm here to tell you that you can do a lot in 3D in After Effects, especially with the latest version. Obviously, this is very high-end Cinema 4D stuff, but you can get away with doing a lot of really good stuff, really easy in this new version of After Effects. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is go here to the Mets rebrand. I have it on this page and definitely check out the work, get in inspired by the work. This is really cool stuff. What I'll do is let's go back to Photoshop and let's analyze this. This, this is very simple, but very powerful. Now, one thing that really catches my attention is the use of the circle. Yes, they were going with a sewer cover. It's very New York. They incorporated the Mets color, the orange for the circles. It's using one of the design principles of repetition. So they're using circles or you can use any other geometric shape and repeat it. So they're using repetition for the circles here. You can see here just repeating. Now, it's also very symmetrical. There is balance. If I draw a line, you can see that it's right in the middle. Obviously, this the camera is in a different perspective, but there is symmetry. And there's also contrast. Contrast, another design principle, where it gives you with the use of colors or textures or geometry, you can really emphasize, make something pop more. And you can see with the sewer cover with this metallic gray, it's making the logo of the New York Mets really pop out, stand out. So they've incorporated a repetition. They, they have a very symmetrical design and they're using, they're using colors to give you more contrast. So the Mets logo, the N and the Y really stands out. Now, what I like from this is the use of circles as a pattern. And we're going to incorporate that in our very own motion graphic. Now, if I go back, you can see they did the same thing here, but they're using home plate. And they're also using another design principle here, which is simplicity. This is really simple. It's really just home plate. They repeated it. It got bigger. They added just a light and you see the shadow here. And then the third inning, just really big, right in the center, very symmetrical. And then the word inning in small letters spaced out. Very simple, but very effective. Amigos, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and we're using version 2024. And the reason that I'm using this latest version of After Effects is because there is a new 3D render engine, which is a total game changer, especially when you're doing 3D. And I'll show you in a minute. Now, if you're starting out with After Effects or you've been using it for a while, you may be overwhelmed by the amount of effects, tools, or presets that it contains. Now, yes, it is very robust platform software. You can do a lot of amazing things, a lot of awesome third-party plugins, and you can see that I have Red Giant, Sapphire, but I'm here to really tell you that there's only a handful of tools or effects that I use consistently that will get me 80% of the way there. The last 15, 10, 15, 20%, is maybe a paid plugin or a technique that I'll show you at the end of this video tutorial. Okay, so what we'll do is, the main thing is to remember, get inspired by good work, study the design principles, maybe choose a couple of things that really stands out to you, and then implement it in your very own work. And if you do this repeatedly, you will soon start to develop your very own style. And that's what happened to me. If you study any of my work, you'll see that I love using gradients, I love using glows, and I love using lens flare. And it's very simple, clean work, clean look. That is my style. And that is something that I developed after years of just, you know, getting inspired and trying to replicate 
other work, but then adding my own little twist to it. So for this assignment, let's pretend we have an assignment. We want to do a baseball player intro. Let's select Ronald Acuna. He is the MVP, the National League MVP from this past year for MLB for baseball. And check it out. We have our folder assets. We have a cutout of Ronald Acuna. There are several methods that I use to do perfect cutouts or clean cutouts in Photoshop. But there's so many different things that I want to show you in After Effects that I'm going to skip it. But I use a combination of old school techniques and new techniques to really give you really clean, clean cutouts. And obviously with the new AI, it does a lot of the work for you, but still it's not perfect. There's a couple techniques that I use to really help get that last 10, 15%. I also have this HDR image and let me switch over to Polyhaven, this is where you can get those HDR. There's also 3D models, textures. This is a great resource for getting these assets. It's all free, definitely bookmark it. And let's go back. And I have some air particles that we'll use, some fog. And all of these are from Action VFX. Now, full disclaimer, I am an affiliate of Action VFX but I use their stock footage all the time. They got great stuff and they got 3D stuff now, which I definitely have to check out. What I like about them is that you can buy them individually. You don't have to buy the whole pack. And I have this texture, this concrete texture, which I got with Envato Elements. I have a subscription to Envato. I don't have any affiliation, so you can find this texture anywhere by simply doing a Google search. And I have this, this is from Vecteasy. This is another website where you can get free vectors. And I found this online, Atlanta Braves logo. Okay, so let's get started. What I'll do is I'll create a new composition, 1920, 1080, 23976. And for the 3D render, make sure that you are in classic 3D. Hit okay. Let's bring in our vector file to the timeline. Let's drag it in. Now, before we do anything else, let's go back to this website, Team Color Codes. And I'm gonna go to the homepage. I'll type in Atlanta Braves. And it's pretty cool because it gives you the hex code, the hex color for the team. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go here. Let's make sure that we deselect. Let's go to the rectangle tool and I'll take out the stroke, say none. And for the fill, let's paste it. So right now I did a control V. And then what I'll do is select a rectangle, control C or command C, go to contents and then let's paste it. Command V or control V. Let's try again. Let's make sure we select it, control C. And then control V, then we get rectangle two. And we go to the selection tool, which is the letter V, V for Victor and or victory. And then let's copy this hex code. And then we'll do the same thing for the yellow. Okay, now we'll call this colors and I'll make it as a guide layer. So let's right click and let's go to guide layer. What is a guide layer? Guide layer is there to help you in your design. When you render, it won't render this. You'll be able to see it when you're working, but if you do a render, it won't render this layer. Okay, let's go to the logo, and then what we'll do is, let's right click, let's go to create, create shapes from vector layer. We can delete the original vector layer, and let's go and let's rename this to Braves logo. Let's drill down. Let's go down to contents and we have three groups. Let me zoom in. We got group one, which is red. Let's rename it to red. And then group two is blue. And then group three is a little trademark symbol. Not sure if you can see it, but we're not gonna use it. Let's delete it. Hopefully we won't get sued. Now for the red, we definitely, definitely want to get the right color. So what we'll do is we'll select the fill with the eyedropper tool, select it. 
Let's sample it. And let's do the same thing for the blue. So you can see that for some reason, this vector came with the colors slightly wrong, but we fixed it. Now what we'll do is let's turn on the 3D switch. Okay, it's in 3D space. It's a flat image, but it's in 3D space. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the 3D render engine. And this is new in Adobe After Effects 2024, Advanced 3D. So let's switch it. Now what I'll do is using the camera tools or the shortcut is the letter C for Charlie. We can cycle through the different tools. We can orbit and then we hit it C again. We can dolly in. Let's go to geometry options. Now we have this new parameter and we have extrusion depth. Now we can increase this, for example, to 100. And now if we orbit, it is truly in 3D. But you can see that we're having an issue with the red and the blue is intersecting. So this is what we'll do. We'll split this layer into two. The first one will be red and then we'll make a copy Let's put it beneath it and this one will be blue and the top one will be red. Let's go to blue. Let's go to contents, hide the red and let's bring the blue. Now it's the same thing except now that they're separated. Let's go to two views. I'm going to click on this window and zoom in and then this window I'll switch it to left. Now let's go to the blue and I'll zoom in. Let me zoom in on here. Let's move it back in Z space. We'll move it 50. There you go. 50 pixels. And you can see on this side, it's looking, it's looking really nice. Now we can take it a step further amigos. We can go to geometry options and we can go to bevel style. We have three different styles, angular. Now it doesn't look like it's doing much, but we need to increase the bevel depth. Let's make it 10. And then now you can see, hopefully you can see what it is doing when we choose a bevel style. We have concave and this is pretty cool. We have convex. So you have several options. Let's make it, let's make it concave. Let me see angular. Let's make it concave. This is looking pretty, pretty cool. Okay. Now remember when we were looking and getting inspired, at least I was inspired or I wanted it to implement a geometric shape in my motion graphics. So that's what we'll do. Instead of circles, we can do circles or we can do home plate, but let's create a base, you know, like first base, second base, third base. So let's create that pattern of a base. So what I'll do is I'll go to the rectangle tool. Make sure that all your layers are deselected. You can click here in the timeline. Let's go to the rectangle tool, double click. And it creates this rectangle, the size of our composition. But what we'll do is we'll go down to rectangle. We'll go down to the path. Let's unlink it and let's make it 650 by 650. Let's link it back and we'll call it base one. And now what we want to do is take out the fill and let's just give it a stroke. Let's make it white and let's round it 20 and let's rotate it. Let's rotate it 45 degrees. So here it is. Now let's go to the front view. This is not in 3D yet, so we can't see it, but let's make it 3D so we can see it. There you go. So we turned on the 3D switch, so it's in 3D space. That's why we now can see it in the front view. Now, what we want to do is let's animate this. We, since it's an outline, we can simply add a trim path. So click on add this little triangle. Let's add a trim path and it's right here, trim path. And what we can do, well, just doesn't really matter for this example, but we can just put it right after the stroke and then we can animate it. Now, what we need to do really is let me, we need to change the offset. So let's do this. 
see where it starts. It starts right there. So we need to, let's move it. It'll be minus 90 degrees. All right. So we want it to start up here and it'll go all the way up here. Now, one thing to notice that the edges are straight. Now for you, maybe it might be cool. You want to leave it, but some other people, they want to make it rounded. So we can go to line cap under stroke line cap. Let's change it to round cap. Now what we'll do is, let me zoom out so you can see this. What we'll do is we'll go to the end and we'll go to zero. Make sure that your CTI is at the beginning, add a keyframe, and then we'll go to frame 20 and we'll make this 100. And then we'll select the keyframes, F9 for easy ease. Let's check it out, perfect. But what we can do is select it and we can go into the graph editor, make sure that you are in the value graph. We'll select only the end property and we can make some adjustments. Let's say we want to start very slow, then it speeds up. Select the first keyframe and this handle, hold on to shift. Let's move it. So the animation is starting very, very slow at the beginning, then it ramps up at the end. So let's check it out now. There you go. Okay, let's go back to the timeline. And what we can do is let's put this underneath and let's go to geometry options and let's extrude this. Let's make it 100. Let's check it out. We need to change it to active camera. And let's rotate this. It's a little thick. Let's make it 50 and let's make it angular and let's make it 10. Let's see how it looks. Let's see how it looks with concave. All right, let's do concave. And what I'm going to do is let's make it a little smaller. So let's go to the rectangle path. Let's make it 600. I'm going to go to two views and then just move this. Let's move it backwards. Let's move it right here so you can see it. And if I orbit, this is how it looks. Okay, let's make a couple more copies of this. Control D, Command D. And then I'll go to frame six and then just slide it over. And what we'll do is we'll scale it up to 110 to make it bigger. And then this one, we can push it back. And then we'll repeat that one more time. And what we'll do is we'll go to frame 12, slide this layer over, and then S for scale. And then this last one will be 120. Let's move it, move the CTI forward, and then let's push this back in Z space. So this is what we have, amigos, right now. And if you want, you can change the colors to this space. What we can do is go to the selection tool, and then for the stroke, we can make it red. And for base three, we can make it blue. Okay. Now, let me show you where we take it to the next level. Let's go to layer new. Let's go to light. Now this light type environment is new in After Effects 2024. Now for now, we'll the cast shadows, we do want to cast the shadows, but we'll leave it off because it's a little more intensive when you enable the shadows. For now, we'll leave it off. We can always enable this later. Intensity, let's leave it at 100, hit OK. And let's go to the transform properties. What I'll do is let me just rotate the X and the Y to show you. We can influence how the light affects the 3D geometry. It's looking OK, but what I'm about to show you, amigos, is a game changer. We're going to use this HDR. I'm going to map it and it's going to reflect this image. So let's bring it into our timeline. And what we'll do is we'll hide it. 
And then for the light options for the source, let's reference that HDR. So it's right here. Let's select it. And it looks like almost the same thing as we had before, but here's a trick. Let's go to the Braves logo. And what we'll do is here, let's type in specular. And it is in the material options. Another keyboard shortcut is AA to go into the material options. You can always search by typing here in the search bar, specular. And the shininess, let's make it 85%. Let's go to the logo, the blue. And let's hit enter. Let's make it 85. And let's do the same thing for the base. What I'll do is I'll make it so you can see this in action. Let me make this bigger. And this one, we'll make it 80. Okay. So now that we've increased the specular shininess, what we can do, amigos, is we can play around with this. And we're getting really cool metallic looking 3D right off the bat. It's, this is really cool. This looks amazing. This is one of the new features that allows you to quickly execute high level 3D motion graphics. Although it's just simple, it's the text or the logo or some geometry, or you can use icons, but nonetheless, sometimes that's all you really need. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool. Now we can, we can develop this into something else. I mean, we can keep on going and do something really cool. What I'm going to do is simply show you how to create a simple camera rig. And this is the rig that I've always been using over the years. Go to, let me go back, layer, new camera. And we'll select two node. I'll select 50 millimeter preset, hit okay. And then we'll create a null object. And then we'll duplicate it. Control D, Command D. Now the first one, let's call it move. This will be to move the camera. The second one will be rotate. Now we can create a null to only rotate the logo. So that's something else that we can do. But for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just do a very simple one. This is looking pretty good. We don't have to get too complicated. Now the move and the rotate, let's, we definitely need to turn on the 3D switch. So these nulls are in 3D, 3D space. And what we want to do is push it back. Actually, let, before I push it back, let me undo, let me go to the top view here. So you can see, this is a top view. Now, if we parent everything here, it's going to rotate everything from the front, but we want to rotate from halfway between the front and the end of this. So what we'll do is we'll push these back. Let's say, let's see, 150. 150 seems, seems okay. Let's make it 150. Sometimes I like nice even numbers, so I'll go in and put 150. Now, what we'll do is camera one, parent it to the move, and then the move, actually this position, right click, and we'll go to separate dimensions. And then the move, let's parent it to the rotate, and the rotate, hit R for rotation, and let's go to one view. and then make sure that we are looking at camera one. And now what we can do is we can zoom in or actually dolly in, not zoom in. We can move up or down and then left and right. And what I'll do is let's move, let's rotate this. Let's add some keyframes and let's go to, let's go to five seconds. We'll make this zero and then we'll rotate it on the opposite. So this is what we have. It's really simple amigos, but it's looking pretty cool. With this new advanced 3D, you can import 3D objects natively inside of After Effects. So let's import a 3D baseball that I got from 
Polyhaven, this 3D baseball. And I'm going to import and I have it here. Now there's only certain formats that After Effects will accept GLTF, GLB, and OBJ formats. So those are the three formats. This GLTF, these models already have the texture already wrapped for you. So that's important. And what we'll do is we'll put it down here in our timeline. We'll hit okay. And here's a baseball. Let's increase the scale to 200. Let's make it a little bigger. And then what I'll do is I'll move it. I'll move it here. Let's go to the front view. And I'll make another copy, control D, and move this on the opposite side. So go back to our camera. And actually, let's go to the top view. What we want to do is let's move this back here. Okay. Now let's rotate. We can we can rotate this and let's write a simple expression. Let's go to the X rotation, right click, edit expression and type in, this is one of my favorite expressions, time, which will take the value of the time where you're currently at, where your CTI is, and we'll multiply it by a number, time times 50. So as you can see that it automatically will animate it along the X axis. As long as the CTI is moving forward, you can see the values here. It starts at zero and it's just rotating. And we'll take this same expression and then we'll apply it to the other baseball. But this time we'll do it along the Y axis. So let's go to the Y rotation, right click, edit expression, and let's paste it in. So control C, command C, control V, command V. And it just gives it a little more. Now, you can also keep the camera still or maybe push in, dolly in or dolly out and then animate just the logo and the basis to keep the 3D baseballs in place. That's another option. Just for this tutorial, we're rotating the whole entire scene, but it's up to you, amigos. Okay, let's go to this comp. Let's bring it outside and let's call it Braves logo 3d and let's save this now let's go back let's go back to the actually to the monday night football now let's start putting our composition together and like i said th for that composition we'll take inspiration with the different design elements that we see right here for monday night football and we'll put the logo of the braves in the background real big. We'll put Ronald Acuna somewhere in there and then we'll create the text and we'll do something for the edges. So let's go ahead and start creating that all from scratch. Let's create a new composition and this one we'll call it GFX Acuna. And then for the 3D render for this one, let's switch it to classic 3D. And by the way, before we go, let's go back to the Braves logo 3D. And what I want to show you, let's go to the environment light. We can turn on cast shadows. And you see that it's taking a while, but you'll get really nice shadows for your 3D geometry. But for now, we'll we'll leave it off. We'll leave it off so it's it's quicker. So let's go to let's start building this graphic. The very first thing is a solid layer. Remember that there's only a handful of tools or effects that I use in all my work that gets me 80% of the way there. And one of them is using a solid layer. We'll make a comp size, we'll hit okay. And this is one of my signatures is a gradient ramp. So let's add it. Let's go to effect. Let's go to generate gradient ramp. Now this looks boring, but this is what I do. Let's go back. What I need to do is before we do anything else, let's copy our colors and let's paste it in. So we have it here and we'll lock it. Okay. We'll rename this to BG. And then what I'll do is I'll sample the blue and then the end color. Let's make it a darker hue of that 
blue. So we'll go down. So now it's looking better. But what I do, what I like to do is switch it to radial ramp. And let's move the points. This is a start point, the start of the ramp. Let's move it here. And then the end, let's move it around here. And what we can do is for the start color, we can make it a little lighter. So what we're doing is using a gradient ramp, we're emulating a little bit of lighting into our scene, at least for the background. Now, this is looking a lot better. It's looking really cool, but we can take it a step further. We can add a little more complexity by adding a texture if you like, if you want. And it's up to you. Like I said, you're the designer. You decide what, what level of complexity or how simple you want to do things. For example, if we go to this one, you can see that there's no texture here. There's just some shadows that you see and that's pretty much it, but it's really nice shadows. So it's up to you how clean or how dirty you want to give your scene. Just to illustrate, let's just put this texture as concrete. What I'll do is I'll scale it down. S for scale, we'll scale it down. And we'll add one of those effects that I use all the time, which is levels and levels just to give it more contrast. And I'll call this texture. And then we'll use a blending mode. Let's check out the different blending modes that we have. Overlay, soft light, let's see, hard light. Let's go to overlay. Now, I don't want it black, I want it white. So what I'll do is I'll go to channel and I'll go to invert. And I'll definitely need to change, I'll need to change the blending mode. Let's see, soft light. Let's check this out. Let's check out the different different blending modes. I think classic color dodge is pretty cool. It's a little much. So hit T for opacity. Let's bring this down to at least 20%. Maybe bring it up a little bit. There you go. Maybe 40%. And let's go to 35. These are one of the those details that you can go over back and forth. But I think this adds a little a little more to it. It's up to you how much you want to see that texture. But for now, we'll leave it like this. It gives it a little extra more. Now, what we'll do is we'll add our 3D logo for the Braves. And let me show you one of the other tools that I use a lot. And that is in color correction. It is tint and tritone. But in this case, we'll go with tint. Tritone, try for three, gives you three for the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So you, so you can remap those colors. And tint, it is only two. You can remap the shadows and the highlights. So what we'll do is we'll select the red, we'll select the red, and we'll select one of them and make them dark. We'll make it darker. And then we'll swap it. We can see if we make it lighter, let's go back. What we can do as well is we can give it, go to levels and we can play around with the levels a little more if you want to make it pop a little more. Now we can add a texture to this as well. If you want, what we can do is go to effect, stylize, texture, and you can overlay texture on top of this and we'll just use the same texture that we have for the background. You see it's a little too much. So for the contrast, let's dial it down. And it's a little, it's not bad. We can let's go a little less, maybe 0.2. This is totally up to you um, using this option. All right, let's go ahead and add Acuna. Let's add him here. We'll be using the rules of thirds to place Acuna. Hopefully you know the rules of thirds where if you divide it into three sections, you place your main subject along that line. And that's where we'll place Acuna. Now let's add, let's go back. 
to the Monday Night Football. And let's add something along the edges. So instead of the logo, let's add some text. What I'll do is I'll go to the text tool. And I'll type in Braves. And what I'll do is I'll make it white. And I'm using a very simple, just to let you know, just a very simple font. I know sometimes we go overboard with using a cool font, but sometimes just using a, a simple font, you can get away with it as long as you have different weights. That's the key thing. Using a font that you can vary the weight. You see that I have a thin weight, I have a lightweight, regular, it has semi-bold, bold, and then a black. Obviously this has extra ones, but even if you had three, like a light, a medium, and a, and a bold, that's more than enough where you can vary the weight of the font and you can do a lot with that. All right, so we'll probably stick to the black. What I'll do is I'll make this the size smaller and then I'll just give it a stroke and I think a value of three or two, I think a value of three is okay. We'll place it right here. We'll go to the position property, P for position. What I like to do sometimes is break up the X value and the Y value. So what we'll do is we'll right click, separate dimensions, and then we'll animate this. And what we'll do is we'll select the X position, right click, edit expression. And again, what we wanna do is add time. So we want to leave this code, which will grab the current value, but we'll add time times 20. Now let's check it out. So as the time progresses forward, this is constantly moving in the X direction. Let's see it. Nice. Okay, let's make a copy. Control D, let's move it up. And then what we can do is move it over. And then this one, let's go back. Let's make it a little slower. So we'll drop down the value to 15. We'll make another copy. Let's move it down and then maybe move it here and we'll leave it at 15 as well. So we have three different copies. We'll select these copies, these three copies, Control D, Command D to make more copies and then just move them on the opposite side. And now what we can do is we can select all of these texts and pre-compose. Let's go to layer and pre-compose. Now, if you're not familiar with pre-compose, pre-compose is a way of grouping your layers together. If you're used to Photoshop, think of it as adding different layers in Photoshop in a folder or putting things in a smart object. If you're used to Premiere, it's nesting your sequences. So pre-comp is grouping things together. We can call this text pre-comp. And if you want to make modifications, you can always double click, go inside of the text pre-comp, which is another composition and make your changes and automatically it will be updated in your master comp. Now, what we can do is we can add a blending mode, for example, soft light. And if you want, let's add another effect that I like to use. Let's go to transform and let's skew it Let's give it a little skew, maybe minus three, or maybe minus four. Nice, okay, now let's add the name. Let's save it, let's add his name. Let's add Ronald. Now we have two options, amigos. We can keep it like this in outline or we can make it a thinner weight. Now what I'll do is I'll keep it, I'll keep it like this because I want to show you, I'll show you something, a cool effect that you can add a little bit later. And then for the second one, we'll increase the size to 300. I think it's, I think 300 is a good size. And then we'll change the name to Acuna and it has for Spanish, we need the La Ñ, so it's Acuna. That's how you pronounce it. What we'll do is we'll copy this letter and then we'll paste it in. There we go. And 
and then let's place this right in the center. So what we can do is paragraph, we'll center the text and then the alignment right in the center. And then Ronald, what we'll do is we'll put it right here. This is good. And then we'll make it, we'll make it yellow and maybe a little thicker. Okay. Let's save it. It's looking pretty good. Perhaps many of you can get up to this point by yourself, but you need to go that extra 10, 15, 20% to really take it to the next level and make it professional to make it really pop. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you from here forward. What are the tools and techniques you can use to elevate your graphics and take it to the next level? The first thing that I want you to have in mind is think about your favorite movies or film. Now film has a certain aesthetic that is different from video. So when you look at film, it's a little softer. You have more depth, depth of field. So the edges are a little more, there's blur around the edges. There's vignette is not perfect. There's some noise to the film, even in digital, they'll, they'll put some digital noise to it. So there's a certain aesthetic to film that we, we want to kind of replicate in our motion graphic. And that's what we'll do right now. Let's add some depth of field or fake the depth of field at least. Let's add some vignette and I'll show you a couple other effects that you can incorporate as well. So what we'll do is we'll go to layer new, we'll go to adjustment layer and I'll type in blur. Let's go to effect and we'll go to blur. Now there's really three blurs that I use. Camera lens blur is one which emulates a lens blur, I'll use fast box blur and Gaussian blur. For this one, let's try out camera lens blur. And by default, it has a radius of five. We can make it more, we can make it 10. It's up to you. We'll leave it at the default of five. Now, what we want to do is just blur the edges. So what I'll do is go to the ellipse tool and I'll double click and it creates a mask at the edges. Let me. I'll change the color of the mask so you can see it. Now go to the path, hit control T or command T to bring up the mask transform tool. And what we'll do is holding on to control shift or command shift. We can move this proportionally and we'll move this. We just want to make this circle a little smaller. Now it's applying it inside. So we want the opposite. Simply hit invert. And then for the mask feather, let's make it 250. So there's a nice feather and it's not hard edge. Now you can see that this blur is affecting our player. It's affecting Acuna right here at the edges. Now this is something that maybe for you, it might be perfect. It might work. You might like this effect, maybe not. So what we can do is for this one, let's say we really want to emphasize the player. So we'll take this adjustment layer and we'll put it, what we'll do is we'll put it beneath our athlete, which is right here, Acuna, cut out. And then we'll take the text, we'll put it underneath. So you can see that the blur is right here. Anything above it, which is the cutout and the text will not be affected by this adjustment layer. So the layers beneath it, these layers will be affected by this blur, specifically by whatever is outside of this mask. Okay, and you can see that it's looking, it's looking a little bit better because we added some blur to it. Another quick thing that you can do is add a vignette. Easy way to add a vignette, let's grab the solid layer. I'm gonna rename it to vignette. And what I'll do is the blur, let's go to the mask. M for mark or mask is a keyboard shortcut. Let's copy it, Control C, Command C, Control V, Command V to paste it. And it's a little too much. So let's change the blending mode to soft light, T for opacity, and let's drop it down to 30. Let's see if that works. And again, let's add the vignette underneath the player and the text. Now, one of the key things to make your motion graphics pop or look more professional is adding different layers to give it more depth. And one of the 
easy things is to add maybe some stock footage, like some fog or some air particles. So let's add that to our composition. And I'm going to put this right above the texture right here. Now you can see that we need to eliminate the black. And what some people might do is maybe they'll choose a blending mode to do that and that looks fine, but let me show you a different way. What I'll do is I'll go to effects and presets, search for unmult, and you'll see here image utilities, and then we'll grab this and let's apply it to our layer. And what that does is it'll remove the black pixels from your image. Now what we'll do is go to effect, go to generate and go to fill. And then we'll select the blue and then let's make it a little lighter. And this is looking pretty good. Let's add the particles right above the fog. Let's name this fog. And if you want, you can slide these layers. They're not starting right at the beginning. They're already in motion. And what we can do as well, let's go back to the Monday Night Football. And you see they have a little triangle. We can play around with that. We can add this little, you have this little home play image. This is something we can do also with shape layers, but we already have the vector. And what I'll do is rename it to home play. S for scale, let's make it down to seven and let's go to fill. Let's fill it with red. And let's put it right here. Let's make a copy and put it on the opposite. Now let's go to our cutout. And one thing I wanna do is blend him more with the background. So what I'll do is there's different ways you can do it. You can apply a mask. You can create a mask right here and, and apply it but I'll show you a different technique. And I'll go down to transition, right here, transition. We'll go to linear wipe, and I'll make this 0%, I'm sorry, zero degrees for the angle. And then the completion, let's go up. Let's go down to 20, and let's feather this 200. So you can see that we're just feathering, we're blending in the bottom of, of the cutout. And if you want the hand, you can maybe in a separate, just have the hand, for example, make a copy and this will be the hand, call it hand. Take, take away the linear wipe. Let me solo this layer and then we'll just mask it really quick like this. So we have this. So the hand is completely, you can completely see the hand, but the rest is kind of fading in. Now, the last couple steps are paid plugins, and that's why I left it the very last thing that you can do. But these are plugins that are my go-tos that really gives that nice professional look. And let me show you, these plugins are from Plugin Everything. I get them from AE Scripts. I have no affiliation from them. However, I do know that there are two times during the year where they give you 25% off. One is during the summer and one is during Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I have several of their plugins. I have Autofill, Shadow Studio, and Deep Glow. But we'll be using Deep Glow and Shadow Studio. Let's go back for Ronald. Let's go to Effect. Let's go to Plugin Everything, Deep Glow and automatically you can see that it pops. And this is way much better than the glow that comes with After Effects. And I didn't believe it until I bought it. And once I bought Deep Glow, I use it for almost everything. I don't even use the glow that comes in After Effects anymore. This is my go-to when I need anything that needs glow. Yes, you can tr you can use Saber if you are, you're gonna go to Video Copilot, Saber, Saber is great, however, you saw how easy it was, you just applied it and that's it. Saber, you need to do extra steps to get the same look. But don't get me wrong, I love Saber, I use it, I still use it, but for quick things, and remember, we're talking about 
create this professional looking graphic the quickest way possible because a lot of these deadlines are really short turnarounds you need to execute quickly. Now for Acuna, let's add a drop shadow. Let's go to plug in everything and Shadow Studio 2. Gives you really nice shadows. What I'll do is I'll sample the blue and I'll make it a little darker. And then I'll copy this and apply it to the logo. So let's go to the logo. We'll apply it. It's a little heavy. So for the master, I'll dial it down to 30. And we can even make this bigger. Maybe the logo, we can make it a little bigger. But that is it, amigos. Let me hide the colors. Let me hide this. There we go. Go to half so you can see this a little bit better, a little quicker. The last thing that I would add is a flare. I would add a flare right here. Really simple. And the flare, my go-to flare is Video Copilot. You can, you can get a stock footage of a flare and use it as well. I'm gonna go to optical flare, really quick options, go to pro presets, and maybe even use this one. Let's see, let's try this one. And then we'll go on transparent and we can change the blending mode as well. And what we'll do is we'll put it right here. Maybe bring down the brightness a little bit. There you go. Maybe we can move him a little bit over so we can see the little and yeah, but those are fine details. Uh, let me put this into RAM preview so we can see this in real time. Now, you could definitely put this in 3D space, the layers in 3D space and move the camera, but that really depends on the assignment. You know, if this is something that's gonna be up for a second and a half, two seconds, you really don't have a lot of time to do a lot of fancy things. So depending on how long your graphic is going to be up, you know, either on broadcast or on social media, that will really dictate how much animation or how much effort of the animation you're gonna put into it. So if this is gonna be up for five seconds, yes, I have the time to animate the text. We have, you know, maybe five seconds, seven seconds. If this is for a documentary where we're going to introduce this player or highlight where we have time, yeah, maybe I take that extra level, put all these layers in 3D space and move the camera slightly to give it that parallax among the different layers. But if this is only up for like two seconds, three seconds, you really don't have that much time. It's really not worth that extra effort to do that. And then the text, let's put it underneath the Braves logo. There you go, that is better. And this is what my sports motion graphics course is all about. More details are coming soon, but wanted to really give you a preview of a breakdown going from the creative process, the design, using the tools and effects and after effects, and really what are some of the techniques that takes an ordinary graphic, but takes it to that elite level. That is it, amigos. I really truly hope that this video has been a game changer for you. It'll help you in your career, in your motion graphics journey. If you want to learn more, click on the link in the description or the button below. And remember, life is truly a gift. Make it count.